congratulations uh it's all out now we all know big team announcement you have booked your flight to tokyo you must be absolutely thrilled yeah i'm really happy i'm just relieved and obviously it's happening obviously last year with the pandemic it's been a funny old 18 months really but just can't wait to get out there now and hopefully like you know hope covid you know you know it's obviously quite stressful with people not wearing masks and stuff but just got to try and stay away from those places from tomorrow i'm kind of going into like an isolation period um okay. so yeah i'm just trying to be as safe as possible and get on that lane hopefully. exactly that <laughs> it's going to be different but it, it's what you know you guys all dream about and I just want to talk about your career because I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but you are still so young and you've done so much and you've achieved so much. Commonwealth champion, European champion, world champion, Paralympic medalist. I mean, it just reads like a who's who, right, of credentials. Yeah. But when you recap at London 2012, which is a really significant Games, wasn't it, for, for Paralympics, and you were the youngest member of the GB Paralympian Athletics team. So when you look back at 2012, what are your abiding memories and what did you learn from that experience? I think for my first games, um, people were just saying to me, obviously I was really, I didn't really know what, what to expect and it was a crazy six months. But from, from what I learned is just enjoy it, embrace every single moment and don't waste, don't make the most of every minute. Don't waste, and that's the any, way. don't waste any opportunity. Every time I speak to you, yeah. you are just like a ray of sunshine. You just <laughs> emulate warmth and positiveness. And I know you've got that steely determination when it comes to competition, but do you think through the highs and lows that really helps you in terms of your mental aptitude and approach? I think um, having the low of Rio, it's just made me very... I've obviously always been a very determined person and fighter, but I think, you know, you've just got to keep positive and there's always a positive in life. Obviously, you may have a down day, but then the next day is a new day. Move on and learn from it, you know. And, yeah, I think sports really helped me. I think you have to be mentally strong and mentally physically as well. So COVID's been a struggle for all of us in our own different ways. And, yeah. and from an elite athlete perspective, the, the kind of lack of competition. So how have you found that? Because I know you're driven and I know you've been training really hard, but it has been very, very different circumstances leading up to these particular games. Yeah. And um, so for me, obviously, last year I moved back home to be with my family and all of lockdown. I uh, didn't see my coach for six months, but I just thought, you know, Liv, use this opportunity. Don't waste your time. Don't stop training. You know, use this to work on your weaknesses. And it makes such a difference. I don't think I'd be jump, running the times I've been running, running the PBs. And also, obviously, my jumping, there's a big jump to come out. It's going to come. I think it's basically waiting for me in Tokyo. But yes! <laughs> and that, that's how he wants it. <laughs> Yeah, because you know? it is all about timing, Liv, isn't it? As an elite yeah. athlete, you can train and train and train, but it's on the day that counts, which is so cliched, but yeah. from an elite element, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, literally. I think for us, we've just got to be patient. Tell yourself you've done all the training. Don't be impatient. Just if you're having a bad session, learn from it. Move on. Like, you know, like say you're having a bad day, but... Just take for the as well. You mentioned the impact that sport has had on you as an individual, because you know you've got so many credentials. I mean, I can't even imagine your cabinet at home of silverware and medals. It must be immense, or you're having to get a new one every year. <laughs> but <laughs> you're very inspirational as as a young lady. And, and what would you say to? to any youngsters watching this or any of our Disability Sport Wales pathway athletes who ultimately are aspiring to be the next Livy Breen? So for my message to the youngsters would be um, never, find your passionate, find what you love doing and never give up. Short Simple and sweet, I know, but that's why, that's what I've learned for myself. 
It's a good mantra. I'm loving that. I might use that. Love that. And in terms of the lack of competition, obviously you did compete at the European Parathletics Championships in Poland, which seems an age ago now, but you know, it was only a couple of weeks ago. How wonderful was it to get back into competition mode? And I know you've had some other competitions since then, but how important has that been for you? For me, it was just... Um mentally going into the European Championships was you know basically that's my Paralympic final and for me it was just a real it was quite emotional as well because we haven't competed for such a long time in that environment and it was just you know learning being back in that being back in that environment again and remind, reminding yourself why you do it and it was just a really good preparation for going to Tokyo obviously the traveling as well getting the the learning about what was maybe like with COVID. Obviously, it's not as far as Poland to Tokyo, but um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was just great to be back in that environment, being with the team, and just yeah, being around the athletes again, who you compete against in the world. And I think if I hadn't gone, it would have been a big of a shock going to Tokyo instead of not going to the European Championships. And what's the vibe like then in the kind of GB camp? Because I know that a lot of you are incredibly close and the, the bond that you've got and you all spur each other on and, and encourage each other, don't you? Definitely. Um, you know, it's it's a lovely environment and, you know, it's lovely to have such close friends. You know, I've made friends in that team for life now. And, you know, you share incredible moments, you share low moments, you know. And you just got to support each other as a team. And, you know, if one's not having a good day and one's having a bad day, you know, one's having a good day or bad day, you know, it's it's not a very, it's quite a hard environment to be in because some some people are really happy, some people are really sad, you know, mm. but you just, yeah. we just come together as a team, support each other and just be there for one another. So the next couple of weeks before you get on that plane, um, I know a lot of the hard work's been done now, but I'm intrigued to know. So what do the next couple of weeks have in store for you? Obviously, keeping safe, looking after yourself, getting yourself mentally prepared to head out there. But what does it entail? So for me personally, I am basically going to like a lockdown, ordering my food shop online, having a bubble who I see, not going to busy places you know just basically not going anywhere apart from the track and seeing I don't know some of the track friends for walks outside but other than that that's my life and training <laughs> and and to put into words it's a long time coming I, I never it never fails to amaze me the emotional impact on you guys with Tokyo being postponed especially in terms of preparation, you know, it comes every four years and you want to be the best you possibly can. Yeah. And that mental side has been incredibly tough. But when you do get on that plane, what, what are the emotions going to be going to be like? Because, you know, as I said, it's the trials and tribulations. And I think all of you guys, you haven't just been physically tested, have you? You've been mentally tested as well. For sure. And I think... Um... For me, for me personally, you know, some people didn't, some people didn't train through lockdown, they didn't have any motivation. But for me, I thought these games are going to happen at some point. I want to be in the best shape I want to be in ever. And you're, you know, 25 years old is a great age to be as an athlete. And, you know, it has been mentally difficult and physically difficult. But I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about my body, how it works. And, you know, we didn't see physio for, I didn't see a physio for six months. And I know we see them every, like three times a week. And it was just like, everything was just taken away from you so quickly, you know? I thought I was moving back home for three weeks. Oh, I thought, oh, you know, it'll be over. No, six months later, I was still at home. I was like, what is going on? But, you know, it just made you, it's made me learn a lot about myself. And as I say, like, making the most of people who you want to spend time with and who you love ones as well. Well, I think you're a true inspiration. You are <laughs> a ray of sunshine, Liv. And mm -hmm. I think you're in tremendous form. 
and everyone at Disability Sport Wales just wishes you all the luck in the world in Tokyo. Go get them for us and, uh, and fly that flag. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>